you doing? It's Ron the High Arc Hunter here. I have a brand new uh, M Rod 25 straight out of the box. Just received it from Pyramid Air. Uh, doing a little testing on here. I uh, threw a low power scope on here. 10 yards. We're throwing it over to Chrono to see what kind of shot spread we get. Let's take a look. And here we've got our last shot on the. Uh, I got a 24 shot string. That should be hit 23. Right on down. Let's see where we end up. This was a 3,000 pound fill straight out of the box. First one was 811. Got a high 834. Low at 808. Average 822. Stream spread at 26. Not bad for an unregulated gun. Not bad at all. We're going to go figure the foot pounds. We're going to take a look at the target in just a second. And here we've got our uh, 24 shot group on the uh, 25 Marauder. Again, straight out of the box, 3,000 pound fill, 10 yards. Uh, we'll try later and see what it does at longer yardage, but I want to get a barometer to where this gun shoots before we start tweaking on it. Okay, here you can see we've got it tethered. Uh, we've got our external regulator on it. We've got it set to a 2,000 PSI output pressure. We're going to mimic uh, what will be happening when we add the JDS Airman regulator at 2,000 PSI. Uh, see what kind of uh, shot count we get and what kind of extreme spread we get. I'm going to run an 8 shot mag and we'll see where we go. Alright, that was our 8 shot string on the regulator at 2000 PSI. Let's see our countdown. Average 8.14, extreme spread 11. That's a little more like it. Okay, here we go next. We got a JDS Airman regulator uh, set at 2,000 psi. We've got the uh, JDS Airman uh, bottle rod adapter for the Marauder. I'm going to screw the two together. They don't always quite line up. You can back them off a little bit. I like to either land like this with a foster fill here and a gauge fill on the top or off to the side like this. Um, I've got some extra regulators, so I swap the bonnets around until I get one that works. Uh, if you know kind of what configuration you want, that being the best, you might talk real nice to JD and get him to switch some bonnets, uh, match it up to the P-Rod adapter, or I'm sorry, the B-Rod adapter before shipping it. Here we've got his uh, 22 cubic inch bottle. We're going to screw everything together and see what kind of length we got, and then from there it's a matter of personal preference as to how long you want this thing stuck out there. You can go as short as down to here and keep it within the stock length. Um, you've got a gauge block that stops right about here. You want at least a quarter inch between the gauge block and here. I like a larger pre-chamber. I don't mind it being stuck out there. I like to stay as, excuse me, as much of the stock as I can. So I'm probably going to go to somewhere around in here. I can always go shorter, but I can't go longer. Once I cut the tube, we're pretty much committed. So off the end of the tube, as usual, I'm looking at about taking 10 inches off the end of the tube. That's going to leave me with about 6.5 inches of pre chamber uh, to actually store the 2000 psi versus the 3000 psi. JD's done a little redesign from his other adapters, done the drop a little bit longer, so you don't have to use the 2 inch bottles. You can use the 2 and 3 8 inch bottles. Um, extra air gets them on each fire and then uh, go with JD's uh, 1.5 millimeter uh, threaded regulator, 4500 PSI. It seems to work really good. Uh, you get a heck of a lot more shot count that way also. Uh, but this is the configuration we're gonna use. We're gonna chop about 10 inches off the tube. And then as you can see, we're going to have to modify the stock. A lot of people go to crazy ends to make it look pretty. I cut them off flat and we're done. You know, I don't mind having it sticking out there so it's gonna get cut somewhere in here. The screws will recess in through here. I'll run a nice little round hole through there. Pretty much just chop the tube and go. Uh, we know where we want to go from here. I got a little change of plans here. We were planning on cut cutting about 10 inches off of the tube since this is a sin rod. Now that I've taken it apart, I see I got a series of baffles in here. So at the 11 inch mark, roughly, we're going to be right here. Uh, when we're done, I'll let you know what the finished length of the tube will be where I cut it off to. We're going to go ahead and chop this thing off and then go trim the edge up before we cut the tube. Prettiest, 
I'm gonna go clean that up on a little belt sander. And... All right, now that we've got her lopped off, it ain't the prettiest, but we're not going for fashion here, we're going for function. Uh, we're gonna go sand the edge of this and then mark our tube and bring it out and she'll cut it off next. All right, now we've got the end of the tube marked just a little bit past the fore end. I'm gonna try to get it as close as we can to there. Um, we're gonna take now and lop the tube off and then we'll trim it back and eventually we'll have to shave the front of this to clear the two mounting screws on there or through drill it. Um, everything's been gutted out of this with the exception of the gauge and gauge block that allows me to keep everything lined up where it's supposed to be. Um, I'm gonna stuff a, a wet paper towel down through it that'll catch all the metal shavings and everything and then I'll push it back out and we're done dry everything out and have it ready to go. So we're gonna go get it ready to cut. Alright, we're ready to cut down the tube goes the wet paper towel. A little carbon fiber rod I got here, I'm gonna stuff it down up against the gauge block. any metal from shavings from penetrating into the gun. Even though it's gutted, it should be all right. I don't like getting any in the gauge block or anything. So we're going to go ahead and lop this thing off. Alright, as you can see we got both ends actually kind of polished flat right here right now. I'm going to go ahead and take them in. We're going to go ahead and deburr them a little bit. And uh, I've got a bead hone I'm going to run in there, but I'll probably just sand this one by hand. Because uh, we're trying to make this video as simple as possible for the average Joe that wants to just go ahead and cut the tube off himself and uh, not be too scared about screwing things up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, polish these up. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I just ran the bead hone through these a little bit and then sanded the edges down. So I got both pieces, the tube we're going to keep, and then the front part of the tube that we're going to do a test drill on to make sure things fit right prior to uh, committing to putting a hole in the tube. Don't want to screw things up. That's what this is all about. So this one's got a little chinger in the end of it still, but like I said, that's only my test fit one. This one's a little rough, but we'll polish that later. I'm not too concerned about that. Most of that hides anyway underneath the stock. I'm not doing this professionally. I'm just doing this for one for me to shoot in the backyard. As you can see, we're pretty close to the end right there, right where we're going to want to be. I'm going to go grab the block. We're going to go ahead and uh, push this thing out, get all the crud out of it now with that wet paper towel. I'm going to go dry it. All right, for mock-up purposes, I went ahead and slid it in there. I put the rear cap on and two uh, retainer screws for the receiver just to get a mock-up on it to see how it's going to look when we're done. I'm not too concerned myself. I never have been. I like to advertise for JD because he does makes a good product. Um, we just have to square this thing up and get the holes drilled right. This one just happens to index right here and right here where I like the gauge to be. You can offset it. You can back it off a little bit if you need to. Once you get air pressure in, it's not going anywhere. This is with one of JD's uh, 22 cubic inch, uh, two inch diameter bottles. Okay, now comes the tricky part. We're back inside. Um, as you can see, the center of the hole is a half inch setback from there. And from the front is a half inch setback from there. Giving us a total of right at one inch at 6,000. So we got a little bit more on the, on the front end up here to play with. So now we got to get a little tricky here and we got to make sure we got this thing lined up where we want it to be. So there's a couple ways of doing it. The easiest way is obviously with a mill and a lathe. Um, we're not doing that today. We're going to do it the, just as easy and simple as we can. We're going to line this up and we're going to mark the center or as rough to the center as we can get there. And it's roughly in the center as we can get there. And what I'm using is the reflection of the light running right down the middle of the hole. Showing me where to mark the tube at or mark the block at. And we're going to put it in a tube now there. So we're going to go ahead and wrap a piece of tape around here. We're going to mark accordingly. We gotta go.
go at least a half inch back because that's where it's going to be at. Now just for shits and giggles, we're going to turn it. They line up the same thing. So they are straight across from each other. As long as it's eyeballed straight, we should be in good shape. And I think we're fairly straight where we're at. I think we're going to be good with that. Where if you were off at all, it would have taken and, uh, you know, one would be off like this and the other would be lined up. But they're both in the same position. So again, we're going to swing it back around to where it's supposed to be. We're going to eyeball it down the front. Everything looks good. It's in line with the gauge block. I don't know if I'm lined up on the camera there pretty good, but that's where it's at. Now from that, we need to come a half inch back and mark it. So now we're going to lose JD's block. We're going to set our caliper to half inch. go a little long. I don't mind going just a scotch long if I do because I can always just shave the end of the tube just a little bit and if I got to take a little bit more off the stock it's not a deal breaker. So we're going to go ahead and use this to mark exactly where we're going to want the hole. Which is there and there. And on this side we're going to do the same here. Line it up at the end of the tube. Which is there and there. Now what we gotta do is figure out what size screws are. We'll put a dial caliper on those. We'll start with a small drill and we'll step it up. Okay, we got him center punched. We're gonna go ahead and drill these with a really, really small drill bit first. And then we're gonna do a test on it. Again, we got the drill that we ran through. We're going to go ahead and stick it all the way through, make sure things line up. And it looks like, even without spinning it, she lines up pretty good. Looks pretty good and straight and centered. We don't really have a way of telling, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull the o rings off of this, which are usually just pinch them up and then push them with your thumb. And you pinch them up. I don't like picking O-rings because I end up tearing stuff up that I don't want to. So again, we'll pinch it up and then just push it off with your thumb. Now if I go ahead and put the block in there, a little bit tight. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little emery cloth and we're going to sand those holes we just drilled to make sure they're not burred up. Before we started, I actually took and uh, shoved a dry paper towel down up against the gauge block again. That way when we uh, push things out, it'll keep it clean. That should be alright for there. We'll go ahead and stuff it back in for the next round. And we get our stuff back in there. Now the gauge or block should fit fairly easy. Alright, now what I want to do here is go ahead and drop this through. It's much smaller than the screws but I want to make sure the drill bit will go all the way through which I'm having a little issue with that right now so we're going to line one up on this side we only got a little bit of movement there so it looks like it's close to centered I'm going to take the next size drill bit and I'm going to put it in the back side over here pull it out and make sure I got about the same movement there too so if you look, I got a little bit of movement there, about the same above and below, about the same above and below the hole there. So it's not a dead nut science this way, it's like I said with a mill it's a lot easier, but at least this way I know I am very, very close to where I want to be. 
So now I can go ahead and uh, grab the screws and we will mic them out with my calipers. Uh. Alright, here we got the screws that JD sends with the kit. Uh, looks like the shank on those is measuring about 0.185. Uh, the drill I've usually used in the past is about 0.190. Uh, that's the one we're going to be using. We're going to work our way up. We're going to step it. So I'm going to snag a couple out of here. And we're just going to step their little thing up until we get to the diameter that we want. As we get up close, we're going to go ahead and just push the drill right through the other side so we stay as close to center as we can. Plus we'll deburr that other side hole on the other side. We'll only have one that we have to worry about a burr on. And the last one we're going to go ahead and push through here. that we're gonna go ahead and deburr all right now that everything's said and done there I've polished the end we just take a few thousands more off of it um, I've gone ahead and deburred the holes here going in now make sure we're good there we're gonna go ahead and punch out the paper towel we got in there to get all the crud out of it make sure the tubes clean at that point we're gonna go ahead we don't need this anymore JDS Airman bottle block kit B rod. We're not going to put the O-rings on yet. We're going to go ahead and stick that in there. We're going to find the two screws. Going to go ahead and start one there. Very little play there. Very little play there. Everything lines right up. They're going in by hand. And we're going to be tightening those up. And the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and test this once I get everything done. Uh, looks like everything's lining up the way they're supposed to. We're going to go ahead and cinch them on down. Make sure we don't have anything binding. Everything's running in really nice and smooth. I'm going to go ahead and put our O-rings on there and we're going to go test this thing. So, well that's pretty much the installation of the B-Rod adapter. Um, let me get you a final length on the tube. You know, we started, you know, just ten thousandths, fifteen thousandths longer than we needed to. Everything lines up pretty much in a straight line as you can tell there you know like I said if you're clocked a few degrees off you know it's not gonna hurt my feelings any um, if I'm doing professionally they're going out to the shop they're gonna be done in here they're gonna be trimmed off they're gonna be the dead nuts they're gonna be shaved on the lathe but again this is for the average Joe that wants to do this in his garage or at his kitchen table in his backyard like I'm doing it is definitely doable with a hand drill a belt sander and a chop saw yeah I could have cut the tube with a hacksaw for all that matters um, so all I really needed was a belt sander to true up the end of it in a drill, a little bit of masking tape, a couple paper towels, and a carbon fiber rod, and I'm done. So again, we're going to go ahead and take this apart. We're going to install the seals. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this thing together, put it on the, ex excuse me, the external regulator at the same 2,000 PSI, reassemble everything the way it was, and start shooting and see what we've gained, what our shot count is, and from there, first we're gonna do it on the external regulator, then we'll try different bottles and see what our shot count is from there, see what we've actually gained. Um, you're definitely gonna gain accuracy because you're gonna get the same shot every time, usually within about 10 feet per second on the spread. Um, so very accurate at this point. Alright, as for finishing into the stock, you've got a lot of different options. Again, like I was saying, I don't mind. I'll advertise for JD. I use his product in quite a few of my guns, and uh, I like tweaking on these things and making them bigger, better, and better every day. So, uh, I don't think I've got anything that's stock anymore. Um, so, our options now, I mean, you could have, we could have left a piece of plastic underneath here and tucked it inside and everything. I cut them flush. You could have cut them a little bit more. You're going to hide it. We've still got to clear for these screws because the tube's not completely setting down in. So what I'm going to do is just go out on a belt sander and uh, trim off that corner back to there, maybe at an angle. I've 
I've drilled them before and then cut them off at an angle, but I think if I just go ahead and run this at a little bit of an angle, I'm thinking something in the range of something like this, it'll probably clear. Or I'll run maybe a little bit more and an angle to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. So I'll probably do something like that. I'm going to run that out to the belt sander, shave it off, and we'll finish the stock up again. There was a baffle right there. You can clear that. You could have dropped into the baffle. Let's grab that other piece and see how that will look. All right, as you can see, the piece we cut off has a baffle up here. Um, we probably could have cut it off the length of the block or maybe a little bit longer and actually salvaged some of that and had it hide in there. This is the first sin rod I've done. Uh, and I usually cut them right off flush anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and trim this and flush it in. Uh, that still has to be done no matter what else we do. Uh, reality is you could probably dremel this down, save this part, cut it off flush or go a little longer, trim out for the foster and the gauge, and probably could have made this a little more aesthetically pleasing. But again, we're covering up JD's logo there, and uh, JD's the one that's uh, leading the charge for us to get us all bottle-fed guns that weren't meant to be bottle-fed guns so we can get a higher shot count and compete with these guys that are buying, you know, $1,500, $2,000 plus guns. We can compete with them with an M-Rod as long as we get the shot count. We can get the accuracy out of them. We've proven that over the years. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this. I'll be back in a minute. All righty. Looks like we got a fit. Uh, looks like I may have taken off a little more than I really wanted to. But, uh, again, this one's mine. It's nobody else's. Um, we get a little bit better trimming them up. They really aren't going to take much to get those to fit in the future. Uh, the block's squared up. Uh, Alright, here we go. We got it set up on an external regulator, JDS Airman adapter. Uh, I've changed nothing on the settings on the gun from when I took it out of the uh, box when it was stock. Uh, we tested earlier at 2000 PSI. We're at the same 2000 PSI output. If I go ahead and drop the hammer on this, you can see a needle swings right back to 2000. Uh, we're going to set this up on the tripod and we're going to watch the chrono. I'm going to put eight across the chrono and see what this thing does. Okay, previous testing we used uh, JSB Exact King 25, 25.39 uh, crane pellets. We're using the same. I'm going to put one mag across. As you saw, I had the regulator set to 2000 PSI. From our previous uh, string on the regulator with the full size tube, we had an uh, average of 814 feet per second, extreme spread of 11. Let's see what we got now, and then we'll go ahead and put a bottle on it. See what we got here. Review says high 818, low 810, average 814, extreme spread of 8. Okay, so we've lost nothing. Um, all we're doing. All right, we just did the testing with the uh, 13 cubic inch bottle. And let's go up here. Low 820. Average 823, extreme spread of 7. That was 18 shots. There shows 16 on the chrono. I did two uh, that didn't click on the chrono. So we got 18 shots before it fell off regulator. That was on a 13cc bottle. We're going to try a 22cc next. All right, in this configuration with a 22 cubic inch bottle, let's review and see what we got. We got 30 shots. We had a high of 827. A low of 819, average of 824, extreme spread of 8, standard deviation 2. That's why we regulate guns. An extreme spread of 8. And shot count up where we want it. We got 30 full power shots before it fell off. Alright, just run the high arc hunter. We just got done finishing the uh, 25 Marauder JDS Airman conversion. Uh, we fired a 13cc bottle. We got a six, eight, or excuse me, 18 full power shots. 22cc uh, bottle. We got a uh, 
30 full power shots with the 25.39 grain JSBs. Uh, very accurate. Uh, shot counts up where we wanted it. Got an extreme spread of about seven or eight feet per second. Um, hell of a rifle. I'm glad I did it. Thanks to JD for asking me to do this video. Look forward to doing more in the future. This is the Higher Hunter, Ron, signing off. Thank you very much.